The Brisbane Airport Corporation plans to increase the airport's capacity. This expansion requires the preparation of a 350 hectare land surface to build a second parallel runway and taxi lanes on. The construction entails more than 13 million cubic metres of sand to be reclaimed on the wetlands at the northwest of the smaller cross runway. It's vital that these works are carried out without disrupting the ongoing airport activities. Yandanal proposes to carry out the work with one of its most modern trailing suction hopper dredges named Charles Darwin. This vessel built in 2011 has a hopper load carrying capacity of 30,500 cubic metres per dredging cycle. The Charles Darwin complies with the most stringent environmental standards regarding emissions, waste and wastewater control. A complex reclamation work such as this requires careful preparation. The future reclamation area will be cleared of trees and roots levelled off and confined by containment bunds, reclamation water, effluent systems and drainages. Environmental monitoring systems will be installed at the tail water outlets and erosion and sediment control such as hydro seeding are applied where needed. Once the preparatory works are completed, the dredging and reclamation process can start. The dredger Charles Darwin will sail to the sand extraction area at Middle Banks and fill its hopper well with sand. During the process, a turbidity monitoring buoy measures the impact on the water column. The sand is lifted from the seabed by a drag head that is built to the most recent insight. It features a movable visor and water injection at both ends of the suction mouth. These help to increase the dredge reduction and thus limit the environmental impact in the extraction area. The sand water mixture is transported through the suction tube to the hopper well, where the sand settles down and is separated from the transport water. Transport water leaves the hopper well through the overflow funnels at the bottom of the ship. A throttle called green valve in the funnels reduces the turbulence and the spreading of the transport water around the ship. As such, the disturbance of the water column around the dredger is minimised. When reaching full load, the dredger stops the hopper filling process and sails towards the temporary dredge mooring area. Once moored, the floating discharge pipeline will be coupled to the dredger with the assistance of a small tugboat. The floating coupling pipe is connected to a 4 to 7 km long discharge pipeline between the mooring facility and the reclamation area. This steel discharge pipeline will be installed under the existing 1432 runway to guarantee uninterrupted airport operations. Now discharging the sand, water mixture is started through the discharge pipe into the bunded reclamation areas. The dredged material is pumped ashore as a mixture of water and sand. The sand settles down and is levelled off by earth moving equipment, bulldozers and hydraulic excavators. The ponding time of the transport water will be carefully designed in order to allow a total settlement of all sand and finer particles. The water quality is monitored before it returns to the sea through the water box. The subsoil of the reclamation site has been recognised to be a compressible soil of peat and loose clay. In order to accelerate consolidation and achieve long-term geotechnical stability, wick drains and overloads of sand are installed, adapted to the specific conditions of every cell. Additional mechanical compaction will be applied wherever required.
rock-filled channels are installed at regular intervals along the reclamation area perimeter. They enhance the drainage of the reclaimed sand. All buns and drainage parts of the reclamation are protected against erosion by stabilising techniques. Upon completion, the whole reclamation is accurately surveyed for handover to BAC.